what is it I should be fearing? Wait, you don't have to answer that. Because the truth is... Yo, what up? It's me, your boy. Man, has it been time since we did one of these, and I hope you're excited because we're about to root out a snake that seems to have tried to worm its way into our communities. On display here is projection, misrepresentation, the release of personal information, the manipulation of context, accusations of sabotage, poaching of guests, cause that's how YouTube works, and emotional abuse to the point of hiding behind an autistic child. Well, she asked us. Here is where I need the critical thinkers out there to start using their critical skills. Can you believe that audio is from the same vid? Yeah, volume equalization, it's a thing. Learn it. As you can already see, it's a smorgasbord of goat shit. So let's get rolling with TLDR. All right. So what I have to present to you here is an out of order mess of a full historical context video about a situation orchestrated by one crafty Keela. You may be familiar with her. She spends a lot of time in side chats trying to suck some major D of the larger creators. When I first saw her, she was touting some kind of familiarity with conspiracy cats. Although I haven't seen her mention him at all in a few months now. I wonder why that is. Anyway. This video is over an hour long and supposedly is covering six months. To give that some reference, Res Rhetoric did a video covering three years and 30 minutes. I'm not gonna lie to you, this video is a slog. It's disorganized, it's out of order, it's confusing and very unclear. For someone who's part of a debunking community, this is really bad. Like, it sounds like it was written by a politician who got caught in a precarious situation kinda bad. Luckily for you, I did the work for you, and I've parsed it down to the main issues that uh, are actually brought up in the video. And this is the order that they're in, in the video. So after looking over this video for an unreasonable amount of time for this drama mongering nonsense, I managed to suss out the main points being made. You're welcome. Ilya bad cuz reasons, and the events above, which are out of order, are supposed to demonstrate that. When you make a video to present the historical context of a situation and present it like you're putting it in chronological order and end up with something this back asswards, you've got some splaining to do for people to be able to justify the charity that you didn't put things out of order on purpose. So let's sort these out. All right, now that that's been adjusted to the proper order, let's take the stuff that this video says doesn't matter out. I probably don't need to explain to you all why these things don't matter, however Crafty seems to think everyone's stupid so I'll let her explain it to you. I would rather cut my own tongue out and have my hands cut off before I would bring anyone's private personal life, especially regarding children, into an argument. It is not something I have ever done in my life. It's not my business, it's not my place. So we can disregard all the things scratched out because they are background private personal life that you and those people involved decided to make public. Thanks for letting us all know though that nobody can trust Amy, Dead Kennedy in space, or Dick Dawson, at least if not the whole of the EIE network in any capacity of things remaining private or not, since apparently you guys get to unilaterally decide who does and does not get to keep that private. Basically, if they decide they don't like you, they're going to release your private info. Not a good look when you're trying to, you know, defend a perceived dox threat. Right, I should make that clear. This video is supposed to be in response to Ilya's video talking about Crafty's behavior and the dox threat in the Standing Up to Bullies video. Yeah, nothing in this video comes close to debunking that video. Actually, a lot of the stuff in this video demonstrates that what Ilva's saying was accurate, so that video still stands. I won't go over it here too much, but it will be linked in the description down below, because unlike what Crafty presents here, it was not deleted, but made private as a show of goodwill that she's twisting to try and paint as other people being cowards. It uh, went back to being unlisted when it turns out that things weren't getting fixed as people had been led to believe before this video actually came out. With those things rightfully knocked on the list, we can start at the top. Crafty getting ambushed. First, 
the use of the word ambush is being used to elicit a specific emotional response. They do this throughout the video, and it's replacing the word overwhelmed. So anytime you hear the word ambush, they really mean overwhelmed. You can't ambush someone in a call that they've asked to be in and that you can leave at any time. The screenshot they show in the video is this one. Here, you can see clearly that they requested to be in a call I was already in. The other screenshots she shows show a clear explanation that I was going to be calling Ilya. It must be so weird to have someone ask where a show's host is when you don't say anything and notice a few red flags when your response is, oh, don't worry, we're gonna keep talking to her. What? Imagine, that time of the month ran without me, and no one said anything. Then Sweet in the side chat was like, oh, don't worry, we're still gonna keep talking to her. Not, not to mention that you can hang up the call at any time. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna skip the people wouldn't do this on other channels. That only needs to be addressed with one thing. Hashtag what about bool? Of course the details of that call are misrepresented, as many people told Punchy to fuck off when he got mad, and he did! He came back, then apologized, which she accepted in that call, and everyone was her defending her and others and simply trying to sort out what was going on. However, for those of us that were in the chat, which aren't the people she names in the video, by the way, like Mr. Victory, for example, who wasn't there, and Glober Mommy, who also wasn't there, she can't even keep those details straight can now see from this video that she was in fact lying to us, so defending her was for naught. But I digress. Secondly, here is an admission of sharing a private call without the knowledge of others live piped through Discord to the uncalled for chat room. So I put the Zoom call on loudspeaker on my phone, re-entered the uncalled for meets on the laptop with earphones in, and I did so so that my words would not be taken out of context for everybody in the uncalled for room. They heard what was said firsthand. Something that doesn't get mentioned is that we asked others to get in contact with us. She was just the only one who had the balls to show up. Amy mentioned in her bit that it was two hours that Ilya was looking for her to get back to her and get in a call with her before the show went live. It was three days. She had complained in the mediation that I had ignored her because I didn't answer her messages within two hours. What a great segue though. The famous ambush of Amy, which no one knew about until Crafty made it public in her bullying video. Amy, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but your behavior causing problems for your son is no one's responsibility but your own. To try to blame others and hide from criticism behind him is pretty gross. You have represented this call in different ways to different people. I'm glad you're finally coming out to say that you're actually the main person responsible for all this, despite your pathetic attempts at trying to brush it off because of your mental state and your child tr and trying to blame others. All things that Crafty frowns upon in this very video. And you're right. No one gets to tell you how you feel, and in return, you don't get to dictate how other people should feel. Everyone saying that they didn't understand or know that you felt this way because you didn't communicate is no one's fault but your own. It's not an ambush, not because the majority agrees that it's not. It's not an ambush because you don't know what the word means. Get your story straight, because in this video, you and Crafty are contradicting each other. Here you say that you had no notice. The second call occurred on the 12th of August when I answered a message from Elia asking to join a group call with no further explanation. And later on, Crafty says that there was some conversation going on. You knew Glober Mommy was going to be in the call. You brought her into the call under the pretense that it was only you and Mom. Here's the thing with liars and people who manipulate shit behind everybody's back. They don't like people talking. They don't like when people ask questions about what they've said because it's very revealing. I asked Glober Mommy. She said Crafty was full of shit. No one imp implied anything. Your own guilty conscience got the better of you and it's all put on display here like some kind of fucking circus that you decided to put your autistic son in the center of. Very nice.
You went to Crafty with this. You knew she was making it public. You did nothing to clarify or bridge the issue. You decided to make it worse and allow it to continue. You decided to lie and manipulate, and you let it affect your son. Stop blaming other people for your failures and crying mental health and hiding behind your son and others when your lies and two-faced bullshit comes back to bite you in the ass. Everything upon in this segment is frowned upon by Crafty later on in this very video. Now, the standing up to bullies video. There seems to be some argument here that if you threaten someone in a way that they know you're talking about them and not naming them directly means it's okay. Are you high? How in God's flat earth does that make any sense whatsoever? Because you didn't say names in the video, it means you didn't make it public, even though people saw it and knew exactly who you were talking about? Besides the behavior in side chat that caused people to start asking questions in the first place? Oh, and some people just saw the video and already knew exactly who you were talking about? I sent the video to Manya without saying shit. Manya was like, is this about Ilya? Yeah, who fucking go figure? How could you possibly figure that out? Let's play the problematic clip. F in the chat if you think this could easily be taken as a dox threat. If I really wanted to hurt you, don't forget, I have your real details. The problem with that is, I'm not you, so stop judging me by your standards. I don't do that kind of shit. Keep pushing me, and I will stop holding my tongue. Stay away from me, stay away from my family, or the next video will not be so polite. I don't know how to make this any clearer to you. This is the crux of the issue. Whatever personal garbage y'all have going on, doesn't matter. If everything in this video was 100% accurate and not a load of trash that it is, it doesn't matter. Doxing is unacceptable. I don't care if it's a flat earther. I don't care if it's a shitty parent. You don't dox someone. Why? Because nothing good comes from a dox. Unless it's accidental, it is always malicious let alone threatening to dox someone who has had credible death threats in the past that we had to address as a community. This is what Ilya's video is actually talking about. Crafty says that this isn't what she meant. She, doesn't, she goes to great lengths to misrepresent personal issues and communications that she wasn't a part of, to lie, hide, manipulate, and bullshit her way to not having to take this one criticism and make, make one minor change to her video, not get cancelled like her prior video says, play victim much. No one said to take the video down, and nobody said don't stand up to bullies. Simply make a minor edit to your video, which would take a matter of seconds in the YouTube editor. She wants to justify rather than fix the problem in how she has communicated. But that does seem to be an ongoing issue with all the people brought up here, isn't it? Kennedy lashes out like a pussy and never owns up properly or apologizes for his behavior because you know what undermines the hell out of an apology? Sending some cherry-picked DMs to try and character assassinate people about a resolved issue, you petty bitch. Dick doesn't reach out to anyone, then it gets framed as they got ghosted or and that, that their content and people are getting stolen or poached and guests are confused so you claim sabotage. Amy fails to communicate or speak out on any corrections to allow things to go this far, and even tries to shield herself behind her autistic child as if they have anything to do with it. Crafty refuses to correct something that she admits is being taken in a way that she didn't mean. Supposedly, Crafty was asked to leave the EIE network over this issue, but it doesn't really stand very well if you're saying one thing and doing something else. Clearly, she still has the support of these people, as they all appear in this video, haven't said anything about it, haven't gotten back to anyone asking questions, and according to Crafty, gave their blessing here. So which is it? Are you against this kind of behavior? Are you against drama? Or are you just interested in starting shit and pointing fingers while acting like a bunch of shitheads behind the scenes? Want to talk about childish responses? This has been a thing with you guys since I've known you. You don't communicate, 
You leave people hanging on shows that are going on. You leave people hanging for weeks on aid that you've offered and shows that are supposed to be starting on your channel. You refuse to act like adults and deal with your garbage. Of course things happen in real life and things can get away from you. Of course there are different priorities versus online shit. Those are explanations and reasons, not excuses. Own your shit and do better. Or don't. But don't expect other people to tiptoe around you, forgive you, let it slide, or put up with your drama llama nonsense. Elia's video. Her video was about how this had been directed at her and how for weeks she said and did nothing. Basically, she complied. However, looping in the next point, Crafty admits and tries to excuse after demanding that her and the EIE network members be left alone to commenting on Ilya's video, messaging her in emails and in side chats, and continuing to talk about her in other live streams. So let's break this down for Il from Ilya's perspective. Someone threatens to release your personal information with the demand of being left alone. You comply. That person continues to talk about you in side chats. You ignore and continue to comply. That person decides to comment on your video. You take the criticism, you fix it, and you upload the video. They proceed to talk about the original video, ignoring the fixes on streams and in side chats. And then they also message you in side chats and attempt to email you. What else is she supposed to do? It's okay for you to criticize her, but she can't criticize you? Or else? You refuse to fix it, so the threat still stands, because you're too stupid and dishonest to make any kind of correction. You have made a video trying to keep her silent. That thing you keep bitching about? Yeah, that's you! You're the one doing that thing! Hell, you are all so paranoid, you kicked Glober Mom out of the EIE network because she worked with both of you. Even Bool left, and you know you fucked up when Bool is done with you. Finally, this cease and desist letters. <sighs> Crafty, do you not know how to read? Punchy didn't send that to you, and no shit you aren't in Tennessee. That's where it came from. Are you being this stupid on purpose to try and show someone's state without getting caught out? Because that's the only thing I could think of with- is the only conclusion that makes any sense without just assuming you're a complete moron. Posting someone's private information is illegal depending on what country you're in and what state you're in. Where you live, it is illegal. Ilya has a credible death threat and personal issues that you putting her information out there could cause her to actually die. That cease and desist letter basically means that should something actually happen to her, then there's a paper trail for the investigation to follow, because if you put somebody's information out there and something happens to them, you putting that information out could make you responsible. Which, given that you've stolen her content, threatened to dox her, then she was actually doxed on Twitter with the exact information you had, including the things that are actually incorrect because of how email work emails function? It's really easy to see that even if this account wasn't you, you are passing the information to someone and it's going somewhere, resulting in this consequence. These are the results of your actions, publicly and privately. That's how this shit works. Learn to read, Jesus. How can you possibly have gotten a position in a debunking community where you don't even know how to read or even research into what something actually is? Oh, it's because the EIE network are run by a bunch of lying, manipulative garbage people. I want to share my information and my experience with you so you do not fall into the same trap as other people have. You've provided a toxic environment for everyone and I want no more to do with it. So thanks, Crafty. 
Thanks for letting us know that Dick, Kennedy, Amy, and you are all emotionally manipulative, lying assholes that will throw people and privacy under the bus if it's convenient for them, hide behind mental illness and autistic children before doing something as simple as correcting some miscommunication. Oh, and Crafty, if you want to be done, maybe stop messaging the people you want to leave you alone, or tweeting about the issue you deceitful cunt. Or maybe this is what you all want, to manufacture drama, but hey, if you don't think this is bad, don't worry, I'm only the first ghost coming to haunt this holiday season. Keep your eyes out for part two, which will be added to the description down below. I know we didn't uh, cover a lot of the random garbage in this video, for a good reason. However, uh, we can talk more about that on the next That Time of the Month, Saturday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. So, if you have questions and want to see more about the nuance of this situation, like, subscribe, and come and hang out with us on Saturday. This has been TLDR. I am not a conniving little fucktard that needs to tear others down to feel better about myself. Could you not? I have to start this all over again.